So here are some ideas I have to make the construction of the outside of the building, the floors, the walls, and the ceiling better. First, I will start with the floors, and the ceiling beds are mostly disabled people. Now, <clears throat> you might be wondering what we can do. One is that we can design floors that absorb sounds and soft plays more. This could make a house more quiet, few with noise sensitivities, which can be a huge issue. But also, if they absorb soft plays more, if you drop something, it's less likely to break, because it's less likely to bounce up and down until it breaks. Or in the soft plays, it transmits less for your body, causing less dampness to your body. The way you could do this potentially is to have um, floors with um, to have very intense density at a small scale, so that um, sound bends and stuff in different directions and is dispersed more and absorbed better. And then you can still have a very hard floor, so you don't fall into it, but absorb sounds very well. Another one is you could have hard structures in the floor with a little bit of gaps with softer structures at a periodic pace, so it absorbs sound better and sound bounces in different directions off the hard stuff. It's absorbed by the quiet, by the um, so it disperses more, and then it also then has, which means it also travels more distance in sort of path, so it bounces all over the place, and then it gets absorbed by the softer stuff. And there's a bunch of other variety of ways we could potentially do this. Another one is to make floors that are less sticky, the less stuff sticks to them with non-stick coatings, so they're non, so it's easier to um, clean, um, in a variety of ways. If you spill stuff, then cleaning is a huge part for many people with various disabilities. So this is actually a important thing. No carpet is a big issue that is um, something you can do nowadays. Because carpets can be very, very hard to clean. And they can also mess up certain mobility devices and they can cause allergens and stuff like that to build up. Smoother floors can also be better for a variety of things with wheels and stuff for mobility. <clears throat> so now, another thing that could be done is um, you could have the whole floor become a cooler, become cooler, and so the so it cools down the more house more evenly with less, and with the coolant going through the whole floor instead of an AC stuff, this means also you need to use less energy to run fans and stuff to use the whole cooling system. You can even have the floor maybe in some places spray out um, mist and stuff to increase humidity and fog cooling. Another weird one out there is having floors with adjustable grip, grippiness. So sometimes you want it to be less grippy so stuff can slide more easily, so to slide furniture or something. And more grippy if you so you don't slip down and fall yourself. And you could have floors that you put electrical currents to parts of them that they could become the surface texture could change, that um they could also become hard or less hard and stuff like that. And again, heated or cooled floors could um disperse heat more even for the house and cause less of a soft rain, so you don't have the loud blowing noises, it's more energy efficient. Um, you can heat up a space faster and more evenly, so you also don't have like a one hot spot or not stuff. Floors with pathways. So maybe it would be nice to have floors that have pathways to guide people to different locations with markings, which can really help people with a lot of anxiety feel less anxious when they um, when they're in a new place because they see markings and stuff. So they feel like they know where to go. Even if they do know it in the head. It's a reading of formation. But also you could design pathways in floors for different types of mobility aids. So some parts of the floor could be marked that they have better grip, or some marks can be marked that they're more slidable for people that want to slide furniture. So different grips in different parts of floors, and they're all marked. And also you can have pathways to um, prevent disease transmission and spread. So if you have like one aisle, you only go this direction, and one aisle, you go in this direction. Another idea for the future is floors with info. So when you can look down the floor and get info about just what's going on and stuff. And the more advanced version of this 
of all this will be full to have access like some screen that can display a bunch of information and things up with the occasion. So that's good. You could also have floors that become stimmy or something with calming, soothing patterns or something for different times of day. You could design floors now with um, drains in them so it's easy to clean up if someone spills water and things you could put in and out. Floors with speakers for like surround sound and stuff and so the sound comes from less focused area so it doesn't have to be blasting loud in one place and it's too quiet in another place. Or some people feel vibration more better for the bodies and for the ears. So you have that one. Also, if you can vibrate floors in specific areas, it can actually help clean up by loosening up dirt and other things. So it could actually help with um, cleaning in the weird ways. And you can have floors with adjustable hardness with a bunch of ways of pumping air or liquids or electrical currents can make stuff harder and less hard. And that all could be very useful in that um, you can make a floor less hard so when someone falls it's less bad or you can make it harder so it um, can take more impact and stuff like that. And it's stronger and doesn't collapse under your own feet or weight. Some people might want it softer so they can, because they might like the soothingness of this, but some people might hate that. Of the softer floors it might collapse a little bit underneath it like not really class but indent, so my whole furniture more in a certain location in a hard floor. Which doesn't collapse as much. Now some more ideas just with all the floors is energy harvest is that we have little ways of harvesting energy from impacts and heat and sound waves and your floor could harvest some of the energy which to um, power off low power devices quickly, no, not high power devices, it won't be, it'll be a few percent, but it still can be significant. Significant because few percent everywhere add up. So, I mean, there's not as much floors, but tiny floors could be um, having adjustable staircases. So, adjustable staircases that can adjust the angle and transform in different ways could maybe help people with that need um that need it to have um that some people can't walk upstairs as well because they have different mobility aids so maybe you could adjust the, it so it's easier for different mobility aids maybe you can make it also that it's easier more like one continuous ramp so if you're pushing something up a ramp more it could be safer stuff like that locally <laughs> so just a little bit of ideas And not all these ideas are fully compatible, so we would have to raise the pros and cons in different places. Another one is um, to try to make floors that have a, how would they call it, fusible in some ways, so you can really put stuff down on the floor and keep it there. So if, if you could have a plastic something that you can melt to the floor, or weld to the floor, but I'm saying plastic, or you can go into the floor more easily and fuse stuff there. Or you can change the, or you can dig it up or something. Or you can change the texture of the floor more to make it rip better locally. And maybe this tunes is very hard, so maybe you have to spray it with something high temperature. Then it becomes like brittle and harder locally, and more friction. But there's some way of doing it. A less extreme version of this is to make the floor more, what one called sinkable. And sinkable floors, what I'm saying is that it's making the floor locally softer and less rigid or something. So it sinks in, so you can hold, for example, a then you can collapse around the thing, and maybe then you can call it after collapse around the thing, so you can grip something better in place. Or you can make it unsink when you want to move something. Or you have to pull it up or physically lift it. This can help with furniture that's not keep furniture in place. On opposite is if you can make the floor more slidable in parts, you could slide heavy objects more easily with less force and maybe decrease injuries at times. And injuries of moving stuff is one of the most common reasons people get hurt oftentimes. So it's like actually a huge, huge deal. Another 
another idea is um, a floor could have automatic ways of flowing air over it to clean up the whole floor. And another, or the opposite, that the floor itself can clean up air because we have like titanium dioxide and zeolite crystals that when UV activated can decontaminate volatile organic compounds and more and make them more, less harmful. So this one I just called soccerable, but maybe a floor that you can write on or something. And this could be you uh, activity to calm down, or you can write down messages for yourself, or you can just do work on the floor as a giant whiteboard if you have trouble standing up or sitting in your better posture laying. Some people have that with various heart issues or more, and digestive issues, or dizziness. And you can. <laughs> Also, just for little kids to play with. Another idea out there I want to point out is uh, magnetic flooring for um, the idea that you could use it as a sign magnet to put stuff on the floor and can pick it stuff. Kind of like a talkable floor idea, but I think that will only work for sections because magnets can also be detrimental if you have anything metal. You can make the floor absorb UV light more because there's some UV light in the house, and this could help slowly decrease the chemo, chemo stuff all day, decrease the chance of cancer and other things. But it would be very, very slight decrease. But our populations of millions and millions of people, that might save a couple lives. It also UV light affects certain UV things, so it might affect that. Another thing that could be done that would be very, very interesting is um, making it so it better disperses light so it's more white in some ways and by dispersing light more it can make the whole room feel less um, when light is dispersed comes from me at all angles a place feels better lit but also it doesn't feel as harsh and it also makes your eyes less stressed out because you're not focusing on one area as much and you could have a floor that changes colors to help you with your circadian rhythm or just to help you tell what time of day it is. So when you walk up in the whole house, you can feel the time of day better. So that's all a bunch of just quick ideas of floors. Now, this is ideas I have for walls. And a lot of the ideas I'm talking about for walls actually do apply to uh, floor, sorry, a lot of these I talk about floors apply to walls. So take that in mind, and some of these are walls apply to floors, mostly the other way around. One is to make them wireless power. Again, an example of something you can apply both. So then you don't have to find a charger outlet and stuff. And it could be potentially safer in that you would not have to less likely stick in something and get hurt. Now it could potentially be more dangerous for electronics and fire them. But it's an idea. Now, wireless power is also usually not as efficient as non-wireless power powering. There's ways to make it more efficient, such as on-off switches to turn on and off so you don't waste power when you're not using it. As much um, the the closer it is, the more efficient, and the more it's like tuned, but still it could be significantly lost power loss. Another idea out there is that to make the whole thing more what we call bump proof. And how would I make this whole thing more bump proof? Is that if you bump into it, you can make it absorb the shock more better, but also it collapses more and it's more swissy. So people that have um, big navigation problems or more like you fall and collapse, if they fall and collapse and hit the wall, they don't injure themselves as much. Now, now the thing, now the con is that if you set, set up a ladder or something next to it, you might sink into the wall more, so they might have those problems. So you might only have sex in the bed that's more bomb proof or to figure out how to do it. Another idea kind of along these whole lines is to make this whole thing more have collapsible separators, collapsible walls. And the idea is that with these collapsible walls, that you can um separate for people that have noise or sound sensitivity or have anxiety so they don't see 
everything as much. Or you can, and you also can give people privacy or less privacy depending on the lifestyles and how they change. You could also have beams around more beams and like rail, railings along the normal wall to help people navigate and move around it. It also help you if you're dizzy or something like that, stand up or lift yourself up. A thing around that too would be instead of beams to move stuff up and down, would be to have beams to slide stuff like a rail track or a track. So you can slide stuff back and forth from one place to another place with less force and less stress on your body. You could have um, more ventilation spread out throughout entire walls so there's less power you need to put in because you have to blow the air less hard to move it around the whole room. But it also will be quieter. And the circulation you can make different. So like if you lower the amount of air movement, stuff settles out of the air faster, like dust. But also on the other hand, and dust, as dust is kicked up, on the hand you don't have fresh air circulating as fast. Stink. Now you could have smart ventilation that would allow mini flight beams or ventilation cells to turn on off depending on the location. So you could have that. So ventilation is complicated, but something to think about more. You could also plant a lot of plants and fungi in the future on it, and you could harvest it for food or to help clean up there. But it also can be something a task could do when you're bored or something to distract you. But also that it's just a very calming thing for most people that can help improve their mental health. And it, you can also use the scripts if you're falling down. The other one is that a lot of people look into making windows that catch solar energy and stuff like that. So you could work in making these solar windows. Now they catch most of the energy from light that you don't really see so that it doesn't really impact your viewing experience. A way or you can use it so it catches some of the light you see, but it dims it down so it bothers you less than two times a day when you want to wear sunglasses or can up filled out certain colors to bother you less. And sometimes you can even make these adjustable. They're a little futuristic, but not crazy futuristic. Another thing is instead of the display before, you could have an outside display to show people the world and to display like, are you welcoming guests now or are you not? Like messages for like, come here or something like that. So like this outside display to help communicate the whole world. If you had walls or walls communicate to people more easily about your needs and stuff like that. Or you can use it to um, interact with that. That you can use it to interact with the outside world. Like something tells us something and transmits information to the other side of the wall. And so on and so on in creative ways. And lastly for walls is you could have walls with built-in cells. It sounds funny, but if the walls have built-in cells, the cells become more of a structural component of the house and they use up less material and increase the strength overall of the house. And they can also increase the safety, especially in the tornado and stuff, when having smaller sections is more safe and being in closed spaces. Or they have place to play for little kids who design themselves but right where they can crawl up and climb and stuff. And not if you don't also make sure it's not a safety hazard. So <laughs> now the last section, the ceiling, where mostly stuff from floors applies to ceilings, but not everything. And not stuff from walls applies to ceilings. Is you could put hooks on the ceilings um, with the hooks could be used to hang chairs and stuff like that for people in white to swing around for sensory issues or calm down. And what's more, you could have what I call a fishtail fan, which instead of a normal fan that has blades and stuff that spin around, you have a more like a fishtail with a long thing that vibrates back and forth like a fist flapping its tail. And that's actually more efficient than the spinning fans. So the future could save energy and it also disperses air more evenly. So it's more quiet, less noticeable, and feels more like a natural breeze. 
you can also make the whole ceiling more domed. By having more of a domed ceiling thing, you can have, you can, we call it certain types of air circulation. So the air is more likely to circulate in a smooth manner because it's going around curves, which you would have to think about specific designs for. Or you can have it so it's also stronger if it's domed, potentially less material, and you can potentially absorb sound better because sound gets not reflected back down straight as much, more to different sides. But this all depends on the exact curvature of the dome. You also could have sign a ceiling with multiple little domes that all add up. So you split it into like two semicircles or many ones. Likewise, you could have visible truss trusses. So trusses are what we use in like bridges and stuff. Some bridges, but they look like triangles. Quite yeah. times they can come in other safes and they have beam they have beams that connect it and they give some rigidity. And they can use a lot less material for the same amount of strength uh, compared to a non to non stress fully filled thing. But if you have it open and exposed, this can be a good place to hang stuff on. But also not only hang stuff on, sound can also bounce get trapped more easily in it and bounce back and forth, going like sound in your whole house and making the whole house potentially a lot more quiet. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe and help send out. I'm trying to use a thousand subscribers a year and four thousand watches. This is really hard, really help I think I can do it. Also, if you need this for future videos, comments, or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.